Good, how are you, Jim? Good, thanks. All right, everybody, please silence your cell phones and no camera recording or audio recording is allowed. We are now joined by Creighton head coach Jim Flannery and student athletes Lauren Jensen and Emma Ronsik. Uh, we will get started with an opening statement from coach, and then we will open it up for questions for the student athletes, first in the room and then on Zoom if time allows. Coach, go ahead and get us started. Sure. Congratulations to UNLV on a great season. Uh, and, and on the job that they've done over the last few years to build that program, uh, to win 30 games is really, really hard. And uh, they're a really good team. We had a week to prepare, or close to a week, and I felt like we, even though we weren't perfect, uh, I thought our, our preparation was, was good. And, and then we made a lot of threes today. Uh, and, uh, you know, Young is a really tough matchup. Uh, because she's a really good player, but they also surround her with really good players, and they shoot the three. You know, when you're when you're looking at them, they shoot the three well from so many positions. You uh, you can't give up too many threes. So uh, I thought, you know, um, we had a lot of people contribute and and um, a lot of different stars. But I thought just our experience and our preparation were great. We're thrilled to be moving through, and we're excited uh, as heck for Monday. We're going to open up in the room for questions for the student athletes first. In the middle, in the yellow jacket. Please state your affiliate. Uh, Corey Jones, Creek County. Uh, Emma, you had a couple rough games coming into the tournament, <laughs> and then at halftime, it was just season plus. What was going through your head at halftime then as you moved through that third quarter? Yeah, I mean, I used to, not used to be, I still am a really like mental, emotional player because I care <laughs> about the game, and um, I want things to go, go well because I've put in a lot of work. But at the same time, just getting away from caring about what you're personally doing and just focusing on what your team is doing really well. Because I thought that first half we were up 12. We had a really, we made a, a lot of really good um, offensive possessions. Uh, shots just weren't falling for me in the first half. But I don't know. I just, I'm tired of getting in my head. So I was just like, we're not going to do that. I'm looking at it. I was three for ten. I think I was 0 for six in the first half from three. But I just kept shooting, and I normally don't do that. So. We're going to go second row on the far end. Just ask your question, sir. Um, you know, I think our motion is hard to guard. Um, that's one of the good things about us going to the postseason is that not many teams play like us or like us. And so, um, you know, we knew that if we just moved the ball and we played our game, that they would maybe struggle to guard it. And I think that was on display tonight. Um, in terms of Jamie, I mean, she's just awesome. I mean, she'll come in and do anything that you need her to do. She'll rebound, she'll shoot the ball. Um, she was doing that tonight. She'll defend, um, and that was all on display tonight. We'll go, I'm sorry, my bad, keep going. Yeah, no, I mean, everything that Jamie and then um, the people who come off the bench, I think they just give us really high quality minutes throughout the entirety of the game. And I think that's something that's really special because I don't think you get that in a lot of teams. Some teams you just see, X amount of players just being the stars and then the rest are kind of the filler kids. But I think our team is just so well balanced that everyone makes a positive impact on the game throughout it. Not even just Jamie, but Jamie's definitely stepped up these last few games and made a bunch of threes and also impacted things on the defensive end. We're going to go second row in the middle. Um, yeah, it was huge. I mean, we work on end of quarter situations a lot in practice um, because that can honestly change the momentum of the game. Um, 
you know, we had a little rough patch there. UNLV was scoring and defending, um, but I thought we withstood it pretty well. Um, and then we just did what we did and um, were able to get to the half with a pretty comfortable lead. Yeah, I mean, I think those last um, two threes of that 9-0 run were Morgan. So I think when you don't find Morgan, when she's confident, she's ready to shoot the ball, I think that's what got us those um, open threes, just because she was super confident at the end of the first quarter or first half and just put them in for us. Uh, we're going to go second row in the middle. Uh, LJ, it felt like every shot you were taking in the first half was just completely uncontested. How did you feel when you were, your teammates were giving you those wide open? Um, yeah, it was nice. I mean, credit to my teammates. They find me well. You know, they know where I like to get the ball. Um, and it was nice to be able to have some pretty open looks for a change. <laughs> Any more questions for the student athletes? Thank you, ladies. You're good to go. Thanks. Good Thank you. Good job. Good job. We'll now open it up to questions for a coach. We're going to start in the middle in the front row here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think what, what we, we, like we said, we're, we're just a little different team. And we watch, you, you watch a lot of film, um, and we're not a patterned, we're not a patterned offense. I mean, we screen, we cut, um, so there's less predictability than there is with a lot of teams. I think I think that makes us hard to scout if you're if you're newly, you know, trying to prepare for Creighton uh, for the first time. And I thought, you know, the ball went in the basket today. I'm not saying that, you know, that's that's part of it too. But we got open looks because because we move the ball, we we screen well, we cut well, uh, and we you know we played our bench. So we you know when you do that and you you can stay fresh, you can play. You know, you can move at a higher level than if if you're tired. And I thought, uh, you know, Jamie obviously was huge off the bench from a production standpoint. But we had some other people who who did a good, a credible job um, in terms of just continuing to make them have to guard us in a way that probably they haven't had to guard. I mean, so we really kind of zeroed in on the teams that were a little bit like us. I think Wyoming was one of those. It was like us, and, and uh, just tried to show them all the opportunities that we're going to have. But you know, we had 23 assists on 31 baskets, so that means the ball was moving. And uh, when the ball's moving, um, it doesn't always go in. But I think there's a better chance it, and we, and we had it spread out. I mean, like you said, Emma was 0 for 5 the first half, and she saw that first one go in in the third quarter. And then we, I thought we did a great job of of continuing to find her. And that doesn't come from the bench; that comes from on the floor. So. You know, we f start five seniors. Uh, they they have a, a really good feel for one another, um, and I thought, you know, certainly there were some deficiencies defensively that that UNLV exposed. But I think offensively, you know, I thought we played really well. We're gonna go second row on the far end. Sure. Well, I think, you know, Jamie's five ten and a half and doesn't jump. I mean, she's got my vertical, but she's super strong. She's disciplined defensively, and I thought, I thought it gave us more confidence to play her on Young. So going into the game, you know, there's a little bit of a, a back and forth amongst our staff about whether or not Jamie's tall enough to, to make an impact on her in the post, but. You know, one of the things that we always talk about is her strength, her ability to, to work without the ball so she doesn't get quite as deep a post up. And that's important, you know, if you're um, – so I thought she did a really good job of, of showing us early that she could guard her, and then that gave us another option, you know, for the last three quarters. So, yeah, I thought Jamie was, was huge. Uh, and she has – you know, she's had some big games for us lately. 
uh, just her experience and um, and she's knocking down open threes too. Okay, we're gonna go second row in the middle for the next question. Yeah, I thought she. I thought she, you know for. You know, for those of you who don't know, she had missed seven weeks, uh, so she did not come back. Keani's a sophomore who hadn't come back from, um, hadn't come back until our conference tournament. So she only had kind of a two-game runway to get to today, and so I think to play on this stage and and defensively make the impact that she did, um, and take care of the ball. I mean, you know, we don't. If she scores, that's great. But if she just takes care of the ball and defends, and I thought she did a good job. We put her on Jackson. We put her on Kimpson, uh, who are tough covers, and they put us, they put you in a lot of tough spots, um, uh, with with Jackson and uh, and Young in two player games, and I thought Keani was really, really did a good job for, for somebody who, like I said, had basically had two months away from, away from the game and and only a, a true sophomore. Uh, we're gonna go second row in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, and that's look. I mean, I, th I think if you, and it's just a different philosophy. But I think if you look and you say she was 15 of 19, you'd say, well, why didn't they double her more? Because, but it's because we played from the lead. And I think when you play, you know, that's why you saw me get upset when we gave up some kick out threes. Is because once we had a lead, we wanted them to have to make tough twos. We wanted to rotate fresh defenders on her. And, uh, you know, I felt like we were scoring the ball well enough that we didn't want to give up. We didn't want, you know, we didn't want the lead to go from 13 to 10. We wanted it to go from 13 to 11 and from 15 to 13 instead of 15 to 12. Because I think when you play for the lead, it's different. And so we just, we, you know, we, we worked on trapping her more and we worked on playing her more single. But the way the game played out, when you play from the lead, you decide because you look at their percentages in terms of how well a lot of those players shoot the three, you say, well, we're going to make them, we're going to make them beat us with two. So, I mean, I knew she had a good game, but 15 of 19, I didn't, I didn't know she had that good a game until I looked at the stat sheet, but I'll do that all day. I'll do that all day when you play from the lead against a team that shoots it as well as they do. We're going to go second row in the middle in the yellow jacket. Uh, Flank, you just talk about Emma's preparation this week, her mentality in the locker room today, like having those rough games in the Big East tournament and how she was able to transition into the second half she did today. Yeah, really proud of her. Just I, lo I loved what she just said, you know, about, you know, I'm too hard on myself and sometimes I can't move on after I miss shots, but um, I've gotten better. She's gotten way better at that, and that's what makes her a great player. I mean, to to – to come out in the third quarter and do what she did, I think she was 7 of 10 in the third quarter after going 0 for 5, that takes a lot of mental mental strength. I mean, that takes it takes experience. I mean, you can't – a freshman's probably not going to be able to do that, okay, but a senior who's been there and is, has had the success Emma's had uh, has the opportunity to do that. So she also – I told her she had the benefit of, you know, her sister Hannah plays at Colorado State, and they played uh, UNLV three times, so she had – their scouting report on top of our scouting report, so she had a little bit of an advantage. Um, but uh, no, really proud of her. She she played unbelievable and unbelievably well in that second half. I thought she did some good things in the first half. The ball just didn't go in. Any more questions for Coach? Thank you for your time, Coach. Thank you, guys. means I was a shooting coach this week, right?
Uh, we are now joined by UNLV head coach Lindy LaRock and student athletes Desiree Young and Kiara Jackson. We're going to start with an opening statement from the head coach, followed by questions first in the room and then on Zoom for the student athletes. Coach, go ahead. Um, well, for, first off, congratulations to uh, Creighton on the win. Um, if anything, I, hopefully it was an entertaining game. Um, you know, they, they played better than us today, so we've got to give respect to that and, and um, give them their due. Uh, in, in terms of for us, um, th this one loss doesn't, doesn't sour an incredible season. And um, to win 30 games in and, and back to back years, it's really special. Really, really special. Uh, and it's really hard to do. Um, so I, I'm incredibly proud of our group. Um, again, just the, the daily commitment that that takes. They don't understand it. You know, they probably hate me for it on the daily, but um, they'll look back and 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 really appreciate and realize just how, how special our season was. Um, t tonight we came up short, uh, and so we're we're disappointed um, and sad more than anything. Um, you know, because we don't get to practice tomorrow. Uh, but it it's just been such a joy to coach this team um, these players these two next to me are our captains our leaders um, they, they poured their heart out on the court tonight and I couldn't ask for more um, and and better people to to be able to coach um, and then we've got a whole locker room of, of players and people that are just great humans first and um, good basketball players uh, that trust and believe in me and, and this program and and you know do do anything that I ask so um, yeah we're, we're sad but uh, have to recognize and appreciate just a phenomenal year okay. we're going to open it up for questions for the student athletes we're going to start with in the front row on the corner here two questions if possible um, Kiera, 7-0 run in the middle of that second quarter to cut the lead to four. Creighton goes on an 8-0 run, I believe, in 56 seconds immediately following that. Kind of at that after that point, did it seem like the team was kind of swimming upstream the rest of the way? Um, a little bit, I guess. But, I mean, we knew that that only happened because our defense wasn't good. So we knew that we were still in the game. Like, we could come back if we did what we needed to do. And Desi, coach, kind of just talked about what this season has meant. But kind of all year we've talked about what your career was going to look like. I know it's it's right after the moment, but when you reflect as your time as a Lady Rebel, what do you remember most? I mean, making it to the NCAA three times in a row. I mean, um, I can't remember when UNLV win and all the games I came to when I was young. I can't remember a game where they went to the NCAA tournament. So I'm just happy that I, I was able to be at UNLV and make history. We're going to go in the front row in the middle. Desi, along those lines, um, you subbed out with a couple minutes left. Um, what were you feeling in that moment coming off the court, talking to your coach, and then just, you know, for the last time? I mean, obviously, you know, this is going to be my last game, but um, I'm extremely happy and extremely proud of, you know, everything that we've done. Um, being able to, you know, let the younger group come in and, and play out here and, and let them experience this because they will be back here next year. And Kiara, well, when you talk about uh, Desiree, what kind of impact do you believe she's had on the the program and what were your emotions, you know, watching her um, for the last time? I mean, she had an amazing impact. We wouldn't be here without her. And I'm going to miss her. Okay. We're going to go front row on the far end. As a reminder, media members, please state your affiliate. Uh, Alex Wright, Review Journal. Um, Kiara, kind of, you know, along those, what Coach kind of said, uh, how are you, how is the team, how is, I guess, the mood in the locker room balancing the emotions of a a, of a tough loss, but also of accomplishing so much this year? I mean, obviously we're upset, but I mean, we can't forget what we did this year. We had a great season, so we got to remember that, and we'll be ready next year. Desi, um, I know you touched on a little bit, being, you know, the future is being bright, but kind of along some of the similar lines, just um, I guess kind of how um, proud are you that, you know, you were a part of this turnaround at, at the UNLV Women's Basketball Program. I mean, I'm just grateful that I was able to make history. I mean, I've been here since 2020 when Coach Lindy came in, and it was just uphill from there. So I'm just extremely proud. I mean, 
we've won 60 games in the past two seasons that we played, so, I mean, that's amazing. Okay. Any more questions for the student athletes? Oh, we're gonna go in the back in the yellow jacket. Uh, Corey Jowen, Creightonian. Uh, Kiara, can you just talk about uh, defensively what makes Creighton so hard to rush out and guard and what, how they were able to get so many open threes, especially in the first half? I mean, they're a great shooting team. I mean, they don't, their transition offense isn't traditional. Like, they don't have a first post run. They all run wide five out. So, I mean, that was pretty d difficult for us. We're going to go in the front on the far corner. Uh, Ryan Gilder, Skyland Gray, Free Press. This is for both Desi and Kira. What type of role model has Coach Lindley LaRock been for you guys in your time here as the Lady Rebel? I mean, she's been amazing. I mean, I've been here since 2020. You know, I, I, I've seen her have a child, and I mean, that's just much of an eye opener. I mean, I've said this before, and I'll continue to say, Lindy LaRock is someone that I want to be. I mean, she has the house, she has the car, she has the children. I mean, she has the family. I mean, she, she's done everything for us. I mean, we're her family too. She treats us like we're her daughters, but she treats us like we're her best friends. So I'm just grateful for her, and she's been a great role model. Yeah, I mean, she's amazing. I mean, I just love how. She treats us as people, and we're not just basketball players. So, like, she cares about us on and off the court. So, I love that. We've got time for one more. It's going to be in the front corner over here. Front corner, please. For both of you, you know, we talked about that run that they kind of got up by double digits. But just what was Coach kind of telling you guys, that, you know, the rest of the second half, uh, especially as it came to just trying to stop and limit them from, from threes, having a good three-point shooting night? I mean, just get stops. You know, that's that's what we had to do in order to come back and, and try to break that double-digit lead that they had on us. And we tried our hardest, and we will continue to try our hardest. Thank you, ladies, for your time. You're free to go. We're going to open it up in a second here for questions for Coach. Okay. We're going to start in the second row on the far end for questions for Coach. Uh, Coach Lorac, what was the message after the game to the team after the tough loss against Creighton? Yeah, well, it's not about breaking down the nitty-gritty of this one game, you know, to try to um, beat ourselves up. Obviously, we're disappointed with the outcome, and, and we didn't want this. So, um, you know, try to – there's a lot of emotions in there. Um, obviously, more sad than, than anything. Uh, so, you know, just tried to – do my best to put into words just um, <clears throat> the phenomenal season that we've had, the, the career of Desi and Ashley, um, and, and remind them, you know, that um, this is just what they do. It's not who they are. Um, th this one loss doesn't sour a whole season of awesomeness and and travel and great times and big wins and um, you know. So it, it's hard. But, you know, that, it wasn't about breaking down, you know, what we didn't do well today to not get the win. We're going to go in the front here in the blue jacket. Ed Grain, your review journal. Jim was talking about they can be a tough scout on one week, you know, how they play. Yeah. They're not traditional, like Kiar said. Was that, as you saw it, did that come out at all and like, how they play and how difficult they can be to guard? I mean, they're a very good team, you know, and, and we knew that coming in. Um, their five-out motion, uh, obviously, it's it's different for us. Um, there, there's some teams in our league that play something, you know, similar. Colorado State kind of plays five-out, not quite the same motion. Uh, Wyoming runs a similar motion, but they do it kind of more for around one. Um, you know, so they are, they are definitely a, a, a tough guard, especially when we kind of play two two traditional post players and, and asking them to kind of guard on the perimeter. I, I don't totally think it was the half court uh, defense that, that troubled us. It was our transition, you know, um, it, it was our transition defense that they, they just, especially in that first quarter, first half, um, they, they got too many wide open looks. You know, I know I told you guys that the threes wouldn't, wouldn't beat us, but I, I expected us to, to at least be there. They had too many wide open ones and those were in transition. It wasn't really their, their half court offense. Um, you know, and then obviously in the second half, it was, you know, we, we were 
climbing uphill and and then you could really kind of see some of the how their motion kind of affects when when you're on your heels you know because then you want to try to press the press the three a little bit more and then they get some layups and um different things so yeah i mean i, I think we're a tough scout too though you know um so they made shots today for sure we're gonna go in the front left corner on the far end Uh, Alex Wright review generally, Lindy, just um, that run, you know, you had them scoreless for about yeah. three minutes just, and then they answer back. Just, I guess, looking back at how much, much of that was kind of a missed opportunity that kind of I don't know, put you guys behind in the second half. Yeah, we were just trying to get some momentum going back our way. We cut it to four, and then they, they finished on an 8-0 run, and two of those threes were in transition. Mm-hmm. You know, so, again, um, that, that was kind of where we, were, we, we broke down defensively. Um, and obviously credit them for making the plays and making the shots. Um, but, you know, we, we kind of felt like we, we got it, you know, right where we want at three, you know, four points, a couple possessions. Um, and then to kind of finish off, you know, the half, obviously it didn't feel that good going into halftime. Um, you know, uh, so then obviously then we were, you know, kind of fighting uphill. And uh, we challenged our team with some small goals to try to, you know, get back within striking distance. Um, and obviously we just couldn't, couldn't get stops. You know, Desi subbed out and you guys hugged. Just what were you just kind of telling her and as you kind of reflect back on her being along with you at this journey, just yeah. how you just kind of, I go, remember her and her, I guess her legacy here at UNLV. Yeah, well, just trying to give her um, a, a moment of, of respect from the crowd and, and for the fans and, and our team. Um, I mean, she came to play today. I don't know if I could ask more of her, 30, 30 points, nine rebounds. She was pretty efficient. Um, you know, so I just I, I wanted to kind of give her, her that, that moment. Uh, obviously, I embraced her and just, you know, it, it was emotional. Um, but I love coaching that kid. You know, we, were, we came in as freshmen together. Um, I'd like to think that we've kind of grown up alongside each other, too. And it's just gone so fast, you know? So she's a special player. We're going to go front row in the middle. Oh, never mind. Uh, front row on the end first. Terrell Emerson, Talk That Talk Media. Um, Lindy, regardless of the finish tonight, you've been very, very vocal about remembering how storybook this season was. As you kind of close the book on this one for year four for you, what do you feel like you've learned about yourself as a head coach so far? I mean, I feel like I learn something new every day. Um, But, you know, each year is just a, a totally new set of challenges. You've got maybe some of the same players, but... You know, as a team, they're, they're very new every year. And I think that challenges me, you know, to try to figure out what makes them tick and, and really reach them. Um, you know, so in turn, then I, I grow individually and, and, you know, I don't treat them all the same. I, I try to, you know, meet them where they are. So, um, you know, th- this year there was, um, I think, a, a lot of gro- personal growth that I've had to really lean on my staff. Um, being pregnant during the season is hard, probably harder than I anticipated, but I couldn't take it back, obviously. Um, and I've, I, you know, w- without just such an incredible staff, uh, I've really had to lean on them, um, and and they're tremendous. You know, obviously my three coaches, but just the support staff, um, administration, you know, so uh, I, that's hard for me to do. Um, so maybe that's my personal growth for the year. We're going to go second row on the near side. Danetta Coleman, No Plays on Sports Talk. Coach, the third year you guys are out in the first round. Yeah. Um, for a moment we saw you as you were leaving the court, tears kind of fell down your eyes. Did this one kind of hurt a little bit more, knowing how special this group was to you. What, what, was, that, what was that moment like for you in that, in that teardrop? Yeah, you know... Not that the other teams weren't special and didn't deserve to win. Um, it felt different this year. Um, this group felt different. Um, and so it hurts. 
you know, I, I really wanted it for them. They wanted it really bad. Um, you know, the problem is we don't get a redo. You know, I'd like to play Creighton tomorrow, but we don't, that's not how it works. Um, you know, so just sad. We've got time for one more or two more. Uh, we're going to go yellow jacket in the back and then on the far end in the back row. Uh, Corey John with the Creightonian. Coach, what were you looking for with that press break you showed a lot in the third quarter, and why did you think it was so easy for Creighton to break it so often? Well, we were just trying to throw the kitchen sink at them and see if something would work, um, you know, get them off balance. And, uh, you know, you kind of saw their veteran play. You know, they, they had five people out there that have played a lot of minutes. They're very disciplined. They executed their press break and, and kind of, you know, made us pay for trying to gamble and, and trying to get a quick steal or, or just a quick turnover. So, um, you know, I wasn't going to go down without a fight, you know, and, and you can't start fighting until the last two minutes. So we tried some different things in, in the third quarter and, and fourth quarter just to um, see if we could catch them off balance. Uh, but obviously we didn't, you know, and uh, cre credit them. we got time for one more. We're going in the back corner. Uh, Lindy, before you guys left, you said you were expecting fans to really travel. Mm -hmm. You were getting all the texts and calls from everyone. You guys had quite the fan section. I mean, I think the only bigger crowd is UCLA fans out there right now. What did that mean to you to see that sea of red? Yeah, well, we talked about it, that anyone that w was wearing red in the gym was going to be for us because all these other teams are blue. And and there was a lot of red. It, there there really was. Uh, you know, obviously, in, in our section across from the bench, I mean, from top to bottom, um, they were there. They were loud. Uh, they were into it. There was even red kind of sprinkled around the rest of the arena. Um, you know, so that was really cool. That was really cool to see. I think that is a testament just to the growth of the program, people willing to travel, to follow, to watch us play. You know, that, that hasn't happened you know, a, a lot. I don't, I don't think lately. I don't keep track of that, but um, that that hasn't happened a lot, you know. Um, and so to see people, you know, get get excited about the NCAA tournament, to recognize how special it is, and try to come give our team a little bit of an edge and, and really support them. Um, we we won the the fan fan fight today. Uh, we we definitely had more people out there. Um, so I can't, you know, say how much I appreciate that, that support uh, from obviously our player families really showed up. But then just, you know, I don't know who everyone was up there, but whether it's from Las Vegas or they live here in California, they're wearing red. So we loved it. Thank you. That's all we have time for. Thank you, Coach. Cool. Thanks, guys.